Good morning, everyone. In the last session of Unit Three of um, Instrumentation and Process Control, we have learnt um, about automatic controller control. What is automatic control? Why automatic control is very advantageous in any process industry? And some of the examples of automatic controller uh, control system also we have learnt. And uh, the terms, or the technical terms related with the automatic control, such as um, the controller, the system, the process, the disturbance, the final control element, all these also we have learned. So the course outcome of this unit three of instrumentation and process control is also is one has to illustrate the principles of automatic process control and different modes of control action. So in continuation with the last session, in this session we will learn about uh, the process control instrumentation diagrams and what are the major factors to be indicated uh, in the diagram of any process control system and what are the types of uh, diagrams and the main classes of process control variable and the references regarding these topics. So coming to the process control instrumentation diagram, what is the purpose of the di uh, these diagram instrumentation diagram? So instrumentation diagram will provide information quickly for the use in process analysis or in the production control specification of equipment and also the preparation of the equipment requisition. And it shows the schematic. Uh, the, the instrumentation diagram will show the schematic layout of the process and the plant equipments which are used in a particular uh, instrument in a particular process. And it does not show the scale of equipment. So how uh, scale of equipment in the sense, how big the equipment is, how small the equipment is, what is the capacity of the equipment, all that won't be shown in a instrumentation diagram. So another specification um, regarding uh, uh, the, uh, the equipment. So what are the, uh, doing the, um, in any diagram uh, for indication of the process, uh, elements of the process control, what are the major factors to be considered? That also you have to kept in mind before drawing a, an instrumentation diagram for any particular process. So you have to consider the, what are the variables to be measured, whether the variable, variables in the sense, uh, whether the pressure, temperature, pH level, all those. So what is an indicating type or the recording or the other syllabus is required, all, all that should be considered. What is control along functions, wherever it is being required, that also is to be considered in a particular process while indicating a diagram. And the types of the connecting lines, where uh, the pneumatic lines or the electrical lines or the hydraulic lines, what are the types of the connecting lines? And the location of the point of measurement or the point of control to be shown. So in any particular instrument uh, diagram, where exactly the measurement comes um, of the process variable, whether it is the temperature or the pressure, that also should be um, to be considered by indicating a diagram for a particular process. And what are the instruments in the control center and in the processing unit, units? So what are or in any process it is running in a particular diagram uh, of that diagram of that particular process? What are the instruments and who, uh, where that has to be controlled in, a process, um, in the processing units also to be indicated. So these are the various um, the factors that has to be considered while indicating a, in the diagram. You can see uh, the, the simple the symbolic representation of whether the valve, or the compressor, or the heat exchanger, or the vessels. So these are the symbolic representation. You can, uh, you can Google search for this also. Um, um, uh, for the symbolic representation in a process diagram, instrumentation diagram. So this is a control valve, um, this is a four way, this is an angular way, diaphragms has to be indicated like this, um, gauge has to be indicated like this. And the schematic valve uh, representation here, hydraulic uh, valve is represented by like this, and the pneumatic operated has to be representation, a representation is by, a schematic representation is like this, should be. So these are the various, um, so when it comes to the uh, compressors, so 
So reciprocating compressors, you have to symbolic representation is like this. Then the compressors and the uh, ventures, if it comes, you have to represent it like this. This type of a diagram in a row instrumentation diagram. This is a centrifugal compressor, and this is a rotary compressor, the liquid um, compressor, liquid the flange compressor, the centrifugal compressor, the heat exchangers, the type of the heat exchanger, then the vessels, the furnace or the tank, the representation of the if uh, any uh, the instruments or the vessels or whatever the, we have used elements so that are being represented by the schematically like this so these um, representation are very important for any uh, for any engineer when he works in a production unit or in a control unit any part of the um, industry so temperature indicator we represented by uh, the uh, the two uh, letter first two letters or the first uh, two letters of the the word the temperature indicator ti temperature tt with temperature transmitter like this will uh, the nomenclature we are talking about the nomenclature how it is being represented it may be single letter or the two or three letters single letter one pro it represents one process action or the instrument or the equipment or the variable the two letter um, we can represent it um, nomenclature in an instrumentation diagram can also be represented by means of a two letters Mm, the two letter could be the first letter of each word. Each word, mm, the each word in the sense temperature indicator. Uh, first letter of each word. Temperature is one uh, word, and the indicator is another word. So first first letter of each um, uh, word could be indicated uh, by nomenclature. Mm, Ti temperature indicator. Tt is nothing but temperature transmitter. Mm, Tr is temperature recorder. T is the temperature controller. L is level indicator. PT is a pressure transmitter, PA is a pressure indicator, flow controller, FR, for if it represented by the FR, FR flow recorder, it represents. Mm, FT is for the flow transmitter, FI is for the flow indicator, or oh, transducer, this is very important, I bar P is a transducer, PIC is a pressure indicating controller, these you have to remember, PRC is nothing but pressure recording controller. So the first letter of each word, so that may be can be used as nomenclature for that particular um, element in a process. LA is nothing but level of the um, flow element, FA, T is the temperature element, LG is level gauge, AT is analyzer transmitter, and PC is the controller. So these are the various uh, um, nomenclature can be used. That may be a single letter or the two letter, the two letter in the sense, the first letter of each word. So this is concerned uh, concerned with the nomenclature that can be used um, in an instrumentation diagram. So what are the types of the diagrams? So you have an operational diagram, physical diagram, and the block diagram. So what exact? Uh, so this is uh, the representation, an example for the typical representation of the instrumentation diagram. You can see IP is nothing but the transducer, TA is the temperature. Indicator controlling system, right? Temperature indicator controller. Heat is the temperature transmitter. The heat exchanger is being represented like this. The steam in the valve. EV is what? It is a valve representation. Steam out, this is where the heat product out like this. This is how you can, um, by seeing the instrumentation diagram, one has to understand how exactly the process is going on, where is the controlling um, unit is uh, has been placed, and what is the um, function of it will be understood by, um, by seeing the instrumentation diagram. So what is an operational diagram? So it represents, operational diagram is one uh, in which the various units present in the process during the operation. It represents the various units present in the, um, the process or the operation including the automatic controller, including the automatic controller.
controller level controller or automatic controller. Then we say that it is an operational diagram. Here you can see it controls the temperature level. Sorry, the level can be controlled automatically in this system by level valve or the control valve. So, what is a physical diagram? Uh, physical diagram also represents the various units present in a um, process except the automatic control. Here yeah, there is only in and out. There is no controlling, uh, automatic control is not there. So, that we call it as a physical diagram. So, coming to the what is block diagram. So, the block diagram, we can see this is a block diagram. Mm, the diagram of the system. Okay, in which the principal parts of the functions are represented. Principal parts in the sense control elements, plant or the feedback elements um, are being represented by means of blocks. Okay, and these blocks are being uh, connected by means of uh, lines to show the relationship between the relationship uh, of the blocks. They are heavily used and they are very much used in engineering and hardware design or the electronic design or the software design the process flow. Diagram. So various elements present in the um, system in a particular process are being represented by means of a, um, a blocks, and the flow systems are being and the relationship between the blocks are being represented by means of a, the arrow lines. So that we call it as a block diagram. So and these are used in hardware design, electronic design, the software design, and the flows, um, process flow designs. So you can see here, uh, here reference input on the set point is there, the, um, the actuating signal, the control elements, the plant, the control variable or the output, which, um, which is the required value. The output is being again sent to the feedback element. So the feedback signal is being um, compared with the set point and it actuates the, um, based on the error, um, that is the difference between the set point and the, the feedback signal will generate in the form of an actuating signal or the error and this is being taken by the controlling element that is the final control element um, final control element in order to operate uh, the valve final control is nothing but it is a valve uh, to operate based on the error so this is an example another example amplifier you have controller Final control element, sensor of the plant, and the machine element, the feedback amplifier, and the error of the detector. So, what are the main classes of the process control variable? So, main classes in the sense you have a control variable, manipulated variable, and the load variable. So, control, what is a control variable? So, control variable is nothing but it directly or indirectly indicates the condition or the state of the process or a product. So example, uh, the temperature in a chemical reactor or the outlet temperature of the water in a water heater, which you have seen in the last session as an example. So what is the condition, whether the condition is about, um, if the set point is about 70 degree, so what is the output condition, whether it is, a, uh, we have got 70 degree or it is less than uh, 70 degree. So the control variable is directly or indirectly indicates the condition or the state of the process or the product. So manipulated variable, um, is a variable which is selected for adjusting by controller so as to maintain the control variable at the desired value. So cooling by changing the cold water flow rate or the same flow rate. Here the manipulated variable is nothing but what we have got um, output as 70 degree which is being compared with the set point. Um, uh, the set point is about 75 degree. The difference is nothing but 5 degree. So the 5 degree will be adjusted by the manipulated variable to bring the output value towards the desired value. So what is a load variable then? So load variable is nothing but, so all independent variables except the control variable and the manipulated variables are the load variable. So load could be in any time, any, in any form of the process variable, pressure, tear. load variable we also call it as a disturbance, maybe temperature, pressure, or the, the condition where the process has been running, whether it has been affected by uh, the um, outward uh, atmospheric condition, all that uh, will come under the, uh, the load variable. So inlet concentration, the example, mm, the concentration, 
the inlet concentration, the temperature of the reactor, the chemical reactor, inlet temperature of the cold water, and pour water. That could be um, from an external, uh, external but disturbance, or it could be an internal disturbance. So that is a load variable. So what is the measuring element? So measuring element is the element which responds to the signal from the detecting element. So comparing element is nothing but a part of the controller which generates a signal proportional to the deviation of the error. Uh, comparing element, uh, um, it compares the signal proportional to the deviation of the error. So desired value of the set point value is what? It is nothing but the specified value of the controlled condition. The deviation is nothing but it is an error. The difference between the measured value of the controlled condition and the set uh, value. So these are the various elements that you have to understand in a particular controlling system in a particular process. So if the error is positive, uh, so when the manipulated error is positive in the sense the manipulated variable is greater than the set value and it is negative in the sense the manipulated variable will be less than the set value. So what is manu measure, uh, manipulated variable you know? Variable which is selected for adjusting by the controller so as to maintain the control variable at the desired value. So what is controlling element which provides the control signals to the correcting unit and dependent on the which is dependent on the error of the deviation that is about the controlling element. So what is offset? So offset is nothing but uh, it is a sustained deviation due to the inherent characteristics of the proportional control um, action. Okay, the deviation sustained however uh, uh, we try to adjust the final control element. We are not we are not um, uh, reaching towards the set point. Then the sustained deviation exists. So that we call it as a offset. So offset is nothing but the sustained deviation or the permanent deviation, or the permanent error um, that cannot be corrected. Also, however you manipulate um, by opening or closing the final control element. That deviation remains uh, constant, or the it be, it will always sustain. So that is because of the inherent characteristics of the proportional control action. The final control elements um, based on the deviation. Uh, the final control element is nothing but the valve. So uh, the valve will operate based on the deviation. That correction has to be made. So these are the various elements um, of a uh, block diagram or the you have to understand elements of the block diagram you can say uh, the main classes of the control variable so these all you should remember what it is controlling element whether it would be control element what is offset what is final control element what is measuring element what is comparing element what is the design value the set value what is the deviation all these are very important to be um, uh, remembered um, in order to understand the further the mode of control for the references, you can go to the books, uh, the, especially the instrumentation process controlled by A.P. Kulkarni um, and Harriet, the process controlled by Harriet, the RPVAS instrumentation process controlled by Harriet, um, sorry, by RPVAS and the instrumentation methods of chemical analysis by B.K. Sharma. I hope you have understood um, what is uh, instrumentation diagram. So the, what are the factors to be considered while drawing the instrumentation diagram and what is the, how the nomenclature has to be uh, used while uh, drawing the instrumentation diagram and what are the um, different types of uh, diagram, the block diagram, operational diagram or physical diagram and what is the importance of the uh, block diagram and what are the elements and what exactly the, those elements of the particular control system will work. All these we have learnt in this session. I hope you have benefited from this session. Thank you all.